Jerome Ford has been a crucial playmaker for the Cincinnati Bearcats this season, but his journey to get to Cincinnati has been a long and twisting road. Ford was not even the top running back on his high school team, yet found himself at Alabama coming out of high school. How did that happen, and who is Jerome Ford? Stay tuned to find out. In the Who is series, we go through the backstories of up-and-coming collegiate and pro athletes. If there's a player you want to see in future episodes, make sure to let me know in the comments section below. Jerome Ford is originally from the Tampa Bay area, where he would go on to have an interesting career at Armwood Senior High School. Ford would be a part of a crowded backfield at Armwood. Eric Collins, who was a year older than Ford, was the top 100 player who would go on to sign with NC State and would later transfer to Northern Illinois. Then there was Brian Sneed, who was another four-star top 100 recruit. Sneed would sign with Ohio State and later transfer to Austin Peavy. Yet Ford was able to show off his talent in a crowded backfield. Ford's high school coach Evan Davis told The Athletic his whole senior year, Drum did nothing but show up and make great play after great play. He's so stupid talented. We had to find ways to get the ball in his hands in different scenarios. He played some wide receiver for us and returned kicks. He wanted to be on the field and help in any way possible. He even lined up at defensive end and had like 8 sacks in his senior year just playing on third downs. With his speed and size and explosiveness, no one could touch him. There's one game Davis will never forget. Armwood was playing St. Augustine in the 6A state semifinals and both teams were undefeated. Armwood had shut St. Augustine out until they scored to make it a 23-6 game. Davis recalled the story to the Athletics saying, Jerome turns to me on the sideline after they score and says, Coach, if they kick the ball to me, I'm putting them to sleep. And I'll be danged if they don't freaking pooch kick it to him. He broke three tackles, sprinted 70 yards down the sideline, and scored. It was over. As a sophomore, Ford accounted for 453 all-purpose yards and three touchdowns while he took a step back his junior year, only playing in nine games and accounting for 353 total yards and three touchdowns again. As a senior, Ford shined in the passing game with 827 yards receiving and eight touchdowns while accounting for 1,136 all-purpose yards and 10 touchdowns. Coming out of high school according to 24-7 Sports Composite, Jerome Ford was a four-star recruit who was the 12th best all-purpose back, 66th best player in Florida, and 370th best player nationally. Ford accumulated over 22 different Division I offers from the likes of Alabama, Cincinnati, Iowa State, Missouri, and Tennessee. During Ford's junior year, Gino Gadugli decided to check out the highly rated Florida running back product, and the Bearcats were high on him at the time. The Bearcats were high on Ford and fell in love with his speed and versatility and needed to replace Mike Boone. At the time, the Bearcats felt they were in a good spot with Ford, and Gadugli even sat with Jerome's mother during a Friday night game to watch him in person when Cincinnati was playing at USF. They were in the process of setting up an official visit, and that's when Jerome Ford's recruitment blew up. At the time, Ford had offers from South Florida, North Carolina, Pittsburgh, and Cincinnati. Then Ford would turn heads at a camp at Alabama, which led to Alabama getting involved in his recruitment. Instead of traveling to Cincinnati, Ford was taking a trip to Tuscaloosa. That December, Ford would commit to play for Nick Saban in the Alabama Crimson Tide. Ford explained why he chose Alabama, saying, Coach Saban really takes care of his players. My mom and I really love that. It was all about who would take care of me, as if I was their own kid. Coach Saban does that for his players. My decision was really based on Coach Saban and the way he treats his players. That did not stop Gadugli from still visiting Ford, although his high school coach made sure to remind him that Ford was committed to Alabama. Dugley, who is now the quarterback coach and no longer the running back coach for the Bearcats, told The Athletic, I was like, I'm just trying to say what's up. Obviously, he's going to Alabama. I just wanted to talk to him. I'm a Jerome Ford fan, whether he goes to Alabama or Cincinnati. And hey, if things don't work out for whatever reasons, maybe just keep me in mind. As a true freshman at Alabama, Ford redshirted after appearing in four games. He had seven carries for 37 yards, making his collegiate debut against Louisville. Alabama would go on to lose to Clemson in the national title game that year, and in 2019, Ford made his first career start in the season opener against Duke, but would once again only play in four games as he fell behind Najee Harris and Brian Robinson Jr. on the depth chart. He also struggled off the field as well, telling The Athletic, I couldn't get into a groove there, and it just transferred on the field. I wasn't really motivated to play the sport. It wasn't a good spot for me. Ford finished the year rushing for 114 yards and three touchdowns on 24 carries. Ford had remained close with his high school coach, and spoke almost every week. After the 2019 season, Ford mentioned to Davis that he was thinking about transferring. Davis told The Athletic, It wasn't the right culture to be honest with you, man. It's such a factory culture at Alabama. They just chew you up, spit you out, and go on to the next guy. 
So when he told me he was thinking about entering the transfer portal, I asked him where he would want to go. The first words out of his mouth was Cincinnati. Kadugli had made an impression on Ford with him telling The Athletic, I had some college coaches tell me if I wanted to commit somewhere else without taking an official visit with the school, that they were done with me. When I committed to Alabama, a lot of schools backed off, but Coach G kept with it. He was always consistent with his message. Good vibes. Even after I committed, he told me if things don't work out, you always could give me a call. He stayed true to that. Kadugli and Ford had not stayed in touch, but Kadugli had kept tabs on Ford, which he had done with a handful of recruits out of curiosity to see how they turned out. He was also still following Ford on Twitter. When Ford entered the transfer portal in January of 2020, Cincinnati was one of the first programs to reach out. The timing was perfect for both, with star Cincinnati running back Michael Warren II announcing around the same time he was entering the NFL draft or going his senior season. The Bearcats wasted no time bringing him in for a campus visit. Kadugli told The Athletic, It was like I went back to recruiting him. He and I went and grabbed some lunch down at the Eagle, and it was like we hadn't skipped a beat. Kadugli told him to just come check it out and be around our guys. Our guys do the best job selling the program. I think it helps when a kid has a place he could trust or a prior relationship just to get him up here, meet our players, meet Coach Fickle, see the city. Although he had interest from other SEC schools, Ford had no interest in dragging the process out and announced his decision to transfer to Cincinnati while on his visit less than a week after entering the portal. By February, he was granted immediate eligibility and he was gelling well with his teammates due to them being down to earth. Ford was the backup running back for the 2020 season, making his first career start in the Peach Bowl, rushing for 97 yards and a touchdown on eight carries in a bowl game loss to Georgia. His best game of the season came against Memphis when he rushed for 116 yards and two touchdowns on nine carries. He finished the year rushing for 483 yards and eight touchdowns in 2020 and took over the starting role this season. So far this year, he is not disappointed. Last week, he rushed for 189 yards and four touchdowns against UCF and has rushed for over 100 yards in four of the Bearcats' six games. So far this season, Ford has rushed for 705 yards and 12 touchdowns averaging 6.9 yards per carry, and Cincinnati is ranked number two in the AP poll at the time of recording. Should Jerome Ford be in the Heisman conversation? Let me know in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other videos right here. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.